and then uh, we can move forward to the next uh, talk, which uh, will consist on a, a live demo uh, uh, given by Mr. Charles Kim, who is an engineer from uh, Park Systems uh, based in Seoul in Korea. I have personally the pleasure of traveling to the headquarters of Park in Korea and uh, to work with him. And uh, we had a very nice and productive uh, uh, week. And I, I was, uh, I, I learned a lot. I could learn a lot. So I also hope all of you can uh, learn a lot from this live demo. And the, live, the, the title of the live demo is a comparative study for surface uh, potential mapping using KPFM. My name is Charles Kim. I am an application scientist of Park Systems. Today, I'm going to show you the EFM and the KPFM application. Actually, the EFM and KPFM is one of the most popular uh, application in a lot of fields. For example, semiconductor or polymer and many other fields, the EFM and KPFM is used for uh, characterizing their sample surface potential or work function like that. So before start the EFM and the KPFM live demo, I would like to simply show you the PAC AFM hardware first. Uh, this is the a uh, simple overview of our PAC AFM. And there's one unique point of PAC AFM is XY scanner and Z scanner are decoupled each other. So the, in the underneath, you can find the XY scanner and at the top, you can find the Z scanner. And from this kind of structure, we can get the very flat XY motion so it makes possible to measure the flat surface without any scanner artifact like the other companies AFM. And also this decoupled G scanner make a fast G server motion and it makes possible to do the true non-contact mode. And here the red dot uh, pointed part is the AFM head so this is the rear picture of the AFM head. Uh, you can find the probe hand, which is the part of the mounting the AFM probe. And this is also one other um, uh, unique point of PAC AFM, because uh, normally the AFM probe is very tiny like this. Only these small pieces of uh, silicone Vapor is the cantilever, so user need to use uh, this one by handling by the tweezer. But sometimes it's very difficult to handling this. But the PAC AFM is supported uh, this kind of bigger size of the metal chip carrier. Then the user can handling this by hand, by fingers, without any tools, and it's also very reduce the danger of the drop the tip or the broken the tip during the uh, uh, preparation of the uh, scanning. And after mount the probe, you can load the head into the AFM main body. And after that, you can find the cantilever and you can adjust the, adjust the AF, uh, cantilever position at the center of the AFM vision. After that, uh, actually, the AFM system is using the SID, which is the uh, kind of laser to detecting the cantilever motion. Uh, so you need to align the laser on the top of the cantilever. But if you use the PAC AFM probe, then you don't need to the control the beam alignment because the, every time the cantilever is pre-aligned at the center of the vision, but when you use the uh, not mounted from the PAC system cantilever, then you need to do this kind of job for align the uh, laser. And after align the laser on the cantilever, you need to align the laser on the position sensitive uh, detecting sensor like this again. Then the cantilever uh, preparation is done. 
So this is the sample, uh, which is I show you the live demo for the EFM and the KFFM. The, this sample has two different um, electronic patterns. Uh, at the left hand side is ground, electrically grounded, and the right hand side is connected to the AFM sample bias line. That means if I apply the any kind of the sample bias here, then it's changeable the surface potential manually. After that, if I scan in here, then you can see the zero grounded electrical property and in, in the other hand, you can see the different potential which you apply to the sample bias at the same time. So let me show you the real measurement. So this is the smart scan software, which is the control the PAC AFM system. And the sample and the cantilever is already mounted and already prepared here. But the tip is now far from the surface, so let me approach to engage the tip close to the sample surface. Then now the line scanning is started. Then you can see the G height signal from the top over here. And now there is the yellow line and the blue line, the, which is the forward and the backward line of the AFM. Uh, the AFM actually the scan in the same position twice in the forward and backward scanning. So when these two signals are matched well like this, then you can say the AFM measurement is going well. So now the forward and backward lines are matching very well, so I can start the EFM measurement first. For the EFM, actually there is no signal here, as you can see. So to, do, to see the EFM signal, we need to use the second locking amplifier. Actually, as already Dr. Kim mentioned in the previous talk, we need to use the second locking amplifier. Uh, the, for the EFM, generally we use the 17 kilohertz of frequency tip bias. So now the drive is the zero. So let me give the one volt of the drive force. Then you can see something changing on the EFM amplitude and the phase. It, now I apply the EFM, the modulating here. But still, there is not specific changes here because the left-hand side and the right-hand side are both are zero now because the sample bias is zero here. So please, watching here, then let me change it to the one volt. Then, as you can see here, EFM amplitude and phase are changed. The EFM amplitude is represent the electrostatic force of uh, magnitude of electrostatic force. So how big it is or how small it is. And the EFM phase is represent to show you the electrostatic force direction information. For example, the positive or the negative. So for example, when I apply the one, the EFM amplitude signal is, has this kind of value, 1.5 millivolt and 800 microvolt. So if I change it to the minus one volt, uh, it's a little bit decreased, but still this one and this electrode and this electrode has higher electrostatic force, but in the in case in the case of the EFM phase, this one and this one are upside down. So I will show you again. If I change it to one, this higher 
pay signal down to the neg uh, negative minus 100. So let me start the scanning the EFM first with, with the, and I will change the sample bias and please see here. If I start from the zero voltage, then there's no EFM signal, EFM amplitude and phase. There's nothing special, but only small differences between electrode and the silicon substrate. Like this. And uh, during the measurement, if I change the sample bias to the 0 0.5, then the one by one different electrodes are shows higher amplitude signal. And if I see the EFM phase, and also you can see the different differences because of the potential is changing now. So if I measuring the surface like this with different uh, sample biases. Actually, I already measured the image because of the time limitation of today's talk. I already finished the measurement like this. Please see the, this slide. The EFM amplitude I mentioned before the is represent the magnitude of the electrostatic force. And the phase is the polarity of the electrostatic force. So for to measuring this image, I changed the sample bias from the 0, 0 0.5, 1, 0, minus 0 0.5, minus 1. Even the minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.5 has different direction of the force, but the color of their own electrostatic force in the EFM amplitude are very same. But in the EFM phase, my plus and plus has the darker, and the, that means the negative phase. But the plus has the positive phase. So from these two images, you can guess, you can analyze your own sample surface electrostatic property. And when I draw the line here, you can see the increase in the electrostatic force magnitude, uh, depending on the sample bias, and it's written to the zero and minus 0 0.5, minus one. But when you see the zero, and the negative means the plus sample bias, and the positive means minus sample bias. This is the EFM. But uh, there's one question is, even I apply the 0 0.5 here, but the number of the EFM amplitude is only under the one millivolt. But this is not real uh, value of the potential, but we want to know. So for that, we need to use the Kelvin flow microscope. Uh, the KPFM is the kind of branch mode of the EFM. So it can measure the quantitative surface potential and the work function signal from the surface. And there are various the KFFM modes, but today I'm going to show you the AEM KFFM mode, which is the amplitude modulation mode and the frequency modulation mode. And one of the frequency modulation mode, the name is the sideband KFFM. And to know the KPFM measurement, we need to understand this one first. If there's two different samples, two different material, when they have some distance, then there's just their own work function, like uh, this and this. But when they close and connected by some electrical connection, then it's matching the Fermi level and there will come the contact potential difference between them. So this uh, energy gap difference is make a electrical field between them like this. But 
our own uh, our uh, proper our purpose of the KFFM is to uh, eliminate to compensate this field. So if I apply the DC bias between the sample and the tip, which the same as uh, the VCPD, then I can uh, the compensate the CPD value. So from this uh, kind of circuit, we can know the potential value of the sample surface. So let me show you the how to measure the KFFM. The KFFM is kind of a branch, kind of sub mode of the EFM. So like this, when the EFM scanning is going well, you can jump to the KFFM mode. Click the KFM, KFFM, but before starting the KFFM mode, we need to tune the EFM phase. Because the AFM system doesn't know where is the positive or negative. So to let this know the system, the polarity of the surface, we need to tune this, uh, this phase tuning. So it's very simple. Just click the tuning and click the start. Then system automatically find the uh, phase offset and this value will the applied here automatically. After that, just click the server. Then you can see the potential signal is coming. Previously, when I measured the EFM mode, the potential was zero. But now I turned on the sub t bias feedback, then you can see the EFM amplitude and the phase is compensate, so it's become zero, but you can see the potential signal here. So it's same like before, if I apply the voltage, then you can see only connected electrode has higher potential. So if I draw the line, it has about the 500 millivolt. Ideally, it must have the one board, but this is the uh, amplitude modulation mode. So that's why it has some averaging impact. So anyway, please see the number of uh, this value. So if I make a two times bigger sample bias, then it's increasing the two times bigger. And if I apply the negative, then it turns to the upside down like this. This electrode become the negative value. And also the same as like a plus one volt, it has 500 millivolt. If I change, apply the minus two volt, it has minus 1.1 of the potential. So let me scan the same images. So let me start from the zero board. Then there's no specific differences in the KFFM potential image. But if I change the sample bias to the 0 0.5, then the potential value we change to the brighter color, like this. And if I make it double, then it has brighter color than the 0 0.5. And also to save the time of this talk, I already measured the KFFM image before. So it's same as like before in the EFM, I used the six different sample biases. So when I draw the line according to the uh, different sample bias line, 
when I apply the zero, it's, it shows almost zero potential. When I apply the 0.5, it's near the 0.5, but because of the averaging, it has a little bit smaller value. But anyway, when it's measured the one volt, it's become double. And it, when I change to the zero again, it downs to the zero. And when I apply the minus 0.5, it has the similar value. It's a little bit smaller than the minus 0.5. And when I give the minus one volt, it has the double again. But uh, the disadvantage of the AM mode, uh, KFFM is that the averaging effect. The AM KFFM is the measuring the electrostatic force itself. You know, the force is quite long range force. And because we are using the elect, uh, magnet, uh, sorry, the electro conductive, the conductive material coated cantilever, that whole part of the cantilever is uh, working as like an antenna to detecting the electrostatic force. So even the, this line is the grounded line, but according to the uh, surf, uh, sample bias changes, also the grounded line has changed the potential as well. So this is the uh, disadvantage of the AM KFFM. So let me show you then how to measure the sideband KFFM. The sideband KFFM is also very simple. For to do the sideband KFFM, just change the mode, scanning mode here, the sideband. And also, the, the previously the amplitude modulation KFFM are uh, were used the 17 kilohertz, but in case of the sideband, we just use the small value of the uh, frequency. For example, between two to five kilohertz. So let me use the three kilohertz in this time. And after that, click the tuning and click the start. Then something different point over here is you can see the two different color, which you mentioned uh, right and the left. The, because the sideband KFFM is uh, used the uh, side peak of the resonance frequency. So for example, if I apply the three kilohertz, then there will be uh, come the 72.9 plus three kilohertz side peak and 72.9 and minus three kilohertz. So minus means the left and the plus means the plus, uh, right. So both two uh, peaks and information is come here. And let me start the line scanning again. Then you can see the EFM amplitude and phase difference are come here. So for the KFFM, let me check the servo. Then the potential signal is coming like before, but I guess you can feel this difference compared to the previous image is it's much clearer and it has much sharp edges here. And previously when I applied the 0.5 voltage because of the averaging impact, it doesn't show the 0.5 milli, uh, volt. But now it's almost exactly the same. The, because the sideband KFFM is monitoring the electrostatic force gradient only, and that gradient is only measured with the end of the tip apex. 
So it doesn't uh, influence by the whole cantilever. So it's, it makes the possible the much better lateral resolution like this. So if I change to the one volt of the sample bias, the difference, the difference between the grounded and the sample bias applied electrode is almost same to the one volt like this. So let's start the same measurement again. Point five. Then the value of the potential is zero point five and one. The potential value is almost close to the one volt, like this nine 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 point eight millivolt. And if I change to minus 0 0.5, also the difference between grounded and minus 0 0.5 of our electrode is 500 millivolt and minus one is almost minus one millivolt like this. So let's see the real image. And I already measured the same images by using the sideband KFFM. So when you see the uh, sample bias uh, apply the electrode here in the red line, then you can see the zero is almost zero, 0 0.5 is 0 0.5, one, zero minus 0 0.5. But there is some small gap here here, and this gap is from the tip uh, potential. So to know the exact work function of the sample, we, we need to uh, do the calibration to, uh, to compensate this kind of small offset. And also when I draw the line in the grounded line, there is no any artifact from the averaging from the near uh, electrode. Even they are very close, but there is nothing changes in the potential. So when I compare the AM and the sideband KFFM, the sideband has much close and much uh, exact result compared to the AM. And even and also when you compare the this this line and this line, you can see the uh, the sideband has very flat and same value on the ground line. And uh, for the last is the calibrate the work function. Previously I said there is small offset. That offset is come from the cantilever uh, work function. So to uh, compensate this value. We need to measure some sample which we already know the work function. So if we have some sample, if we already know the work function of the sample, then we can use it as a reference. So for example, here, if I scan the sample surface, You can see the work function at the third channel here. But the work function of this electrode has almost minus 100 milli electro volt without, uh, before the calibration. But for example, if this electrode is gold, then gold should have the 5.1 electro volt. Then you can we see here work function offset because we already know this sample must have the 5.1 electron board because it's the gold. Then if I 
apply the 5.2 as a calibration number of 3, then you can see the this gold electrode has almost 5.1. After calibrating like this, if you measure your unknown sample, then that value is the real work function of your sample because the work function of the tip is compensated by that offset value in the smart scan. So this is the one example of the work function calibration. The sample has the gold and aluminum and gold, and in between them there is the silicon oxide. And when I the calibrate by using the gold, then aluminum surface is following like this, then that value is very similar to our expectation. So this is the way how to measure the work function by using the KFFM. And thank you for uh, coming today. And that's all what I prepared today. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Very nice, very nice demo presentation. So I would like to welcome Charles Kim. Hello, Charles. Hi, Mario. Hello, thank you very much for being here with us. Actually, we got several questions. So I'm going to read uh, a couple of them. The first one is, uh, why did the grounding line change for AM KPFM mode? Can you please elaborate? Uh, that reason was uh, already uh, explained in the sideband KFFM. Actually, the AM KFFM is affected by the uh, tip, uh, not only the tip apex, but also the tip cantilever length uh, lever is affected by the electrostatic force from overall uh, area of the uh, sample surface. So that means the, even the tip end is scanning on the uh, bias uh, line, but also the because of the cantilever length is long, that uh, area can cover up the grounding line. Also in, in opposite, if uh, we measuring the grounding line, but the cantilever to detect the bias line in uh, in the next of the grounding line. So that means it's mixed the signal in the AM KFFM mode. But uh, as you can see in the sideband KFFM, the sideband is only measured the signal from the tip end and it measured the electrostatic force gradient. So that's why there was not uh, the kind of uh, grounding line change issue in the sideband KFFM. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was an excellent answer. Um, there is another question, uh, which uh, I mean, I, I assume some users will be uh, so, some attendants, uh, maybe uh, beginners on this uh, uh, advanced modes of scanning proof microscopy. So you may find some of the questions. Uh, basic for your uh, extensive experience. So let me just read it. Uh, when measuring the potential using with uh, when measuring the potential using KPFM, do we need to calibrate first? Can you maybe elaborate a little bit about the calibration? Oh, uh, actually, is uh, is half is yes and half is not. Uh, actually, the potential value is directly measuring the VCPD, which is the contact potential difference. But the potential, contact potential difference is not available to calibrate it. But the, because that value is very mixed with the tip itself uh, work function and the sample work function. So it's not available to calibrate, but uh, we can calibrate the work function, uh, which is, uh, electron volt unit uh, channel is we can calibrate. So in the first end of the last I demo, I saw the work function calibration. So work function calibration is we need 
at least one uh, well known, already known the sample, which we, if we know the uh, sample itself work function, then we can measure that kind of standard sample first, then we can calibrate the work function only. Yeah, because the CPD is also mixed value with the tip work function. But I see. By then measuring the, yeah, by measuring the well known sample, then we can calibrate the uh, that value to the yes. Okay, uh, there is another uh, question. Actually, there are two questions, but I can merge them in merge them in one, which is: uh, Can you please comment on the effect of the height of the tip during the lift? Uh, uh, how how the ha lift height affect? the measure potential value and if the sample needs to be grounded? Actually, in our KFFM mode, we do not use the lift mode because our, that is one, our benefit and one advantage of our EFM and KFFM mode is we are using the two different lock amplifiers at the same time. So we basically, we don't use the lift mode. So we can measure the electrical force in very uh, short distance with the sample surface. So probably we, uh, there is no concern about the sensitivity of the EFM or whatever because of the issue of in the lifted height. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for the answers. Unfortunately, we don't have more time uh, for keeping asking you uh, questions. It, it's a pity because you are a big expert on this. Uh, so so I, I'm afraid we cannot ask more questions, but I encourage everyone to send your questions to charles.kim at parksystems.com. And uh, I, I believe Park will be happy. Uh, I believe Charles will be happy to answer. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank uh, you very Charles much for participating.